What are painful emotions? Well, painful emotions, again, are emotions that are caused, uh, the opposite to pleasurable emotions, in that they are caused by uh, actions or thoughts or words or deeds or, uh, or other feelings acted upon out of harmony with God's love and truth. Mm -hmm. So there are energies that are stored within the soul that can be expressed and they will always be expressed in a painful way. Yeah. They'll always hurt you when they're expressed because you've taken prior actions, previous actions or thoughts or, or had fe feelings that are completely out of harmony with God's love and truth. Uh -huh. so, so that's really what painful emotions are. Um, of course, again, there are two types of pain and I think we need to understand that. So um, perhaps we need to discuss the two types of pain. Yeah. There's the kind of pain that you go through that heals you, uh -huh. which is an emotional experience of a release of painful, past painful emotions yeah. that have been stored in the soul. And that kind of pain will actually lead to your pleasure. That's yes. the irony of that <laughs> kind of pain. Whereas yeah, the second type of pain is the type of pain that causes you to not to decide to suppress it or deny it or resist it or or um, you know distract yourself from it in some way, and unfortunately, if you engage in that process with that kind of pain, you just finish up creating deeper pain. Yeah. And this kind of pain is very very damaging to the soul in that it causes an escalation in your pain. So, so pain is in itself is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's the suffering that cause, is caused by long-term painful storage of painful emotions and experiences that is a bad thing. Mm. And the pain itself, while it's can, it can be released from you immediately, if it's released from you immediately, then you'll have no long-term detrimental effects from pain. Yeah. But if it's not released from you immediately, then you will have long-term detrimental effects from pain. Yeah. Or if you've taken actions that are based on pleasure, temporary pleasure that cause pain in the soul, you will have long-term detrimental effects from that, those actions too. Yeah. So, so we need to understand that firstly, all pain is created by actions taken by ourselves or others that, and emotions uh, honoured by ourselves and others. In other words, the feeling of emotions, of energy in motion yeah. that is honoured by ourselves or others that are completely out of harmony with God's love and truth. Yeah. So we need to understand that. But we also need to understand that the feeling of pain is not a bad, necessarily a bad experience for the soul because it can actually improve the soul's condition. Yes. And, and also it is a feedback mechanism for the soul's condition. So it tells us that something is wrong in our soul. And this, this is very, very important for our future development. If we don't know that something is wrong in our soul, then what's the likelihood that we'll actually adjust what is wrong? It's yeah. fairly uh, negligible, I'd suggest. Whereas once we know what, that there, there's something wrong, and the way we know is that we're experiencing pain, experiencing pain. Mm -hmm. that's how we know. So we know there's something wrong because we're experiencing pain. Now we have the opportunity to either suppress that pain with temporary pleasure or, or suppress the pain through denial or suppression or resistance, or the feeling of that pain. If we choose to feel and experience the pain, we will release it in that moment. And when we release it, it will no longer govern the rest of our existence. Yeah. So it's very, very important for us to go through a process, which is painful, to release old pains mm -hmm. and no longer have them stored within our soul. But we need to understand that pain is created by, so all of these painful experiences have been created by something being out of harmony with God's love and truth. Yeah. And so it seems to me that there's the pain that we've accumulated, we've suppressed and accumulated, mm -hmm. and then there's the pain that we're almost accruing by, so that painful, um, the pain from the past that we're storing occurred as a result of some process out of harmony with God's love and truth. Yes, and, and, but it's not only the process out of harmony with God's love and truth that had to have happened, mm -hmm. there also had to have been some suppression of the result. Yeah. Because the only way for pain to be stored and not felt, remember all of this en is energy that is stored in the soul or felt by the soul, one of the two. Mm -hmm. We either store it or we feel it. Yep. If we store the energy, the painful experience in the soul, then what we're actually chosen to do is store that experience at that age 
and that experience will now continue to damage the soul. It'll, it'll reflect upon all of the soul's filters. So what, how the soul sees the world will be through the filters of that damage and nothing will occur until we choose to release it and we must choose to release it. Nobody else can do that for us. Yeah. It is a personal process that we must choose at the soul level to go through to experience to release it. So, so we need to understand that the releasing process is good for us. Mm -hmm. So temporary pain is, is the result of our recognizing painful past experiences and then allowing ourselves to go through the process of feeling them. Yeah. Permanent pain, or what I would classify as suffering, mm. is when you choose to deny, resist, or suppress, or try to substitute painful experience, pleasurable with painful experiences. And when you choose to do those things, you create longer term pain. In other words, you place a layer over the top of your pain that keeps that pain within your soul and now that pain that's in your soul will dictate every single thought, every single action to do with that subjects or groups of subjects. And you will continue to degrade your condition until you're sensitive to the pain. Yeah. So, and, and that's what causes long-term suffering. So it sounds to me actually that you're describing three types of pain. One is the pain we're carrying as a result of suppression of painful events or processes in our past which has been created by the past experiences that we have not released. Yep, so yes. the suppression of those past experiences, yes. so that's pain. Then there's the pain that we can experience through healing, so by actually opening up to those long suppressed things. Or uh, any or, current thing that's happening that's painful. Or a current thing that's happening that's painful. So we can that, release completely that pain, Yep. and as a result it no longer governs our long-term experience. Yep. yep. And then it sounds like there's a third type of pain, which is as we continue right now to engage processes and actions that are out of harmony with God's love and truth. Yes. Then we are creating pain and perpetuating pain. Yes. And if we could add to that, particularly yep. the third one, whenever we're attempting to use pleasure as a result of substitution for pain, mm -hmm. that's all a part of that third group of pains, if yeah. you like. Yeah. And those pains usually turn into deep suffering, like yeah. where, we're, where our body starts coming out with diseases. And you know, by the time we get a disease in our body, it's already an indicator that our soul's in deep pain. Yeah. And we need to be sensitive to our soul in order to enable that pain to be expressed and released. Mm. Mm. Okay, so um, you mentioned the term permanent pain, mm -hmm. which is in result of like long-term suppression. Yes, the, the, if we could use uh, separate temporary from permanent. Yeah. Uh, permanent pain is the result of suppressing the experience of temporary pain. Mm. And what happens there is, you, you, as I've said previously, you place, place a layer of suppression resistance, denial, or substitution over the top of the pain that you need to experience. Now that creates long-term or what you would call semi-permanent or permanent pain. While you choose to suppress, while you choose to deny, while you choose to resist, while you choose to use substitution techniques, that pain will remain. And if you do those techniques, those substitution and resistance techniques and those other techniques I mentioned for 10,000 years, then you'll have that pain in your soul for 10,000 years. Yeah. That's how yeah. the soul works. If you choose to do it for one year, you'll have it for one year. Yeah. <laughs> if you choose to do it for, for 10 minutes, then it'll be just 10 minutes. But there'll be that pain uh, and it will be that period of time until you choose to experience it completely. Mm. until you stop using the suppression techniques that you have in play um, to suppress those particular painful experiences and emotions. Now, for most people, the first process they have to go through is removing the suppression techniques. Yeah. So they've got to remove resistance, remove denial, remove resistance, remove suppression, and remove the desire to substitute yeah. so-called pleasurable emotions for these painful ones. And that process is usually the process that's quite difficult because mm. uh, it's a process that you must engage with your own process, you know, your own thoughts and your own feelings. 
It's not, it's not a process. Other people can help you, but, it's, but they can't help you change your mind or change your beliefs, which are all based on emotions inside of you, um, unless you change inside of you emotionally some of these emotions and beliefs. Nothing can happen. Yeah. So, so it's very important if you find yourself having pain that's chronic, uh, whether it's physical or emotional in nature, that you understand that you've created it through suppression and you need to firstly focus on removing the emotions that cause you to desire to suppress, resist, deny or substitute yeah. these kind of emotions. And that's where I find most people are struggling. Yeah. Because they want to go straight to the pain and they want to bypass all of the suppression techniques. Well, actually, <laughs> the very fact that we want to bypass all the suppression techniques shows that we don't really want to go straight to the pain. Correct, yeah. correct, yes. Yeah. So they have an intellectual exercise yeah. of attempting to get out of emotion that, that tries to bypass all of the suppression techniques, mm. which are all painful, yeah. and they all have pain, so painful consequences. And so most people don't wish to go through any of their suppression techniques because they're all painful emotions. Mm. And as a result, they never really get to the causal emotion that will cause the relief of the pain. Yeah, sometimes to me it feels like it's like a big, you know, pile of crap, really, <laughs> that... <laughs> that I've stacked on, stacked on, stacked on. And then um, get to a point where you realise just, just what you've said, that the painful emotion is only going to cease when you stop all these other th things you've piled on to try and keep it at bay. Yes. And then you have to go through this process which feels a bit um, messy and involved of well, like, well, taking away the judgments of... of expression and well the thing we need to understand it is that it is messy and involved because every one of these judgments and suppressions and resistances and denials have been created by an emotion yeah we want to do those things because there's certain emotions that are dictating to to us that we do those things yeah. and so every one of those things is almost like an addiction that we're, we've now we're now having to unravel yeah. and like any addiction it takes time to unravel it and an, an extreme use of your own will, and which yeah, is something that we covered in our last discussion. We did, and mm. I wanted to um, highlight that, like that again because really you've just said that pain only becomes suffering as the result of the use of our will to suppress. Yes. And so pain will always be temporary if we choose to feel it. Feel it. Mm -hmm. Uh, as it occurs and as it arises in us, mm -hmm. but you've said it can almost become permanent, although I don't believe God created a universe no, where pain is ever permanent. But the reality is there are many people in the spirit world who have been in pain for 10,000 years yeah. or longer. So, so that's fairly permanent. It's not permanent in the sense of forever permanent. Yeah. So there's no such thing as a person forever being in pain. So there's no such thing as a person forever being in hell either. Yeah but they can be in hell in pain for a long period of time dependent upon their own desire to suppress what's going on so this use of will again yes yeah. so it all depends upon the right use of your will yeah. as to whether you experience a long-term pain yeah. which which becomes chronic in its nature and so bad that in fact it can cause your own uh, what you call premature death Mm. But the fact that we all die when we're, you know, from old age still is an indication that our bodies are still in a lot of permanent uh, pain that has yet to be released. Because if we weren't, our cell replication structure would all be perfectly occurring and we would never die. Mm. Our physical body would never die from anything other than an accident or by choice um, or by somebody murdering it. It wouldn't die from disease or some kind of illness or any of those things if you had released all of your emotions that have created your pain. Yeah. So we need to understand that the problem isn't necessarily the painful event. The problem is how we handle the painful event. Mm. Most people handle the painful event through resistance, denial, suppression, or, or some kind of substitution. And these are all very damaging things to happen to the soul and we do it to ourselves. Mm. And then as a result, we usually finish up in our body getting diseases because the energy systems in our soul have been shut down so much. There's no flow of energy. There's no e-motion, energy in motion. Yeah. And as a result, our soul shuts down and therefore cannot properly 
keep alive both the spirit and physical bodies and particularly the physical body and so the physical body gets older older or or gets a disease or an illness and dies yeah. as a result of the suppression of these particular emotions so we need to understand that it's all us it's all what yeah. we're choosing to do yeah with our pain with our pain and yeah. um you mentioned earlier that pain is really a feedback system for us so god's feedback system so our choice to suppress the pain is in fact a, a, almost a rebellion at the feedback system yes and then you're just mentioning physical illness which is another expression of a feedback system isn't Correct. it so there's all these feedback systems that God is trying to show us. Yes, something's well, out of harmony. It begins with harmony. the emotional pain in the soul. Yep. And then, of course, there's the layer of pain that starts to exhibit in the spirit body. So you start losing different senses in the spirit body as a result of suppression. And then as a result, that has a follow on effect onto the material body. And so after the energy has been blocked a long time in the material body, you start getting diseased organs and so forth, disease, diseased processes. A lot of the processes are inhibited. And as a result, the, the physical body starts to decay and, and is very open then to contracting certain types of illnesses and diseases, depending on what you're suppressing. Mm. And there is a direct link between what you're suppressing and the type of illness. There's yeah. a direct link between all of those things. And like I've said in previous answers, we could, you know, there's thousands and thousands of different illnesses, but each one of them has a certain specific thing that you're suppressing in a certain specific way mm -hmm. that creates those particular illnesses. And, and if we understood we're doing all of this to ourselves, we wouldn't then go and get a pill to fix our physical body, which is another form of suppression of the feedback system. Yeah. Uh, what we would do instead is we'd focus on trying to find out what is the actual problem inside of the soul. And that's why God designed it this way, so that we find out the problem that's inside of the soul that's out of harmony with God's love and truth. Yeah. And we fix it. We mm -hmm. choose to fix it. Unfortunately, that's not the approach we take now, generally on the planet. And so as a result, we have this continuing and growing problems with regard to diseases and illnesses, and illnesses and so forth yep. so we put more and more money into <laughs> solving problems that in the end are more and more difficult to solve because we're doing more and more suppression yeah mm. yeah and i just find that really um fascinating that all long-term pain whether it's emotional or physical is the result of our rebellion against god's feedback system mm. and yet god's still trying to give us feedback on that correct <laughs> yeah and so in the end, unless, unless the humanity actually sees this en masse, um, it's very unlikely that a lot of these so-called diseases and illnesses that we face will ever really be cured. And this is what doctors are finding, of course, too. They're finding of organisms that once they cure one type of disease, another one comes up, there's genetic mutations of different things occurring, you know, with regard to bacteria yeah, and viruses, viruses and so forth. And all of these are occurring because the actual emotion allows them to occur. Once you cure the emotion, you don't have to worry about those kind of factors because the emotion is the cure to the disease or the illness or the problem. Mm. And this is why, where we need to understand that the growing amount of pain that we're experiencing on the planet, collectively and individually, generally, is, result, is the result of our direct desire to suppress, deny, resist and substitute temporary pleasure for our painful emotions. And yet, as you said at the beginning, um, we can simply allow the energy in motion or the emotion of mm. the pain um, and it will be gone from us yes. in a much briefer period. Well, if you look at a child sincerely feeling an emotion, I'm sorry, I'm not now talking about a child's emotion of rage or anger or rebellion or any of those like kind of tantrum. things. Like a yeah. tantrum. I'm talking about a sincere feeling that a child has. For example, let's say the child injures itself, and sometimes children can injure themselves quite badly, um, where they need stitches or other things. And, and once you let, if you let them cry, 10 minutes later, you know, they mm. can be completely free of any pain, yeah. uh, even though there's still the injury. Yeah. And as a result, they repair very rapidly. They usually repair very rapidly if they're allowed to have that release of the emotion. So a child knows how to do this process very, very simply, mm. but most adults have had it suppressed so strongly 
that we've now lost all contact of how to actually process our painful emotions. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, thanks. Pleasure.